24 hours away from the start of Broncos camp at the UC Health Training Center, we go through our three bold projections that we have for Broncos camp all throughout the preseason. We share Broncos fans' responses, plus we get into some news and notes regarding Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, and how it may impact the Broncos after the 2021 NFL season. We break it down. We react on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos. Your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of the show. Locked On Broncos is your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Locked On NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stance to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, director of video content at Pro Football Network and Broncos analyst for the Locked On NFL Network and Nine News. You can follow me on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL. Follow the show on all social media platforms on Twitter at Locked On Broncos. And make sure you mash that subscribe button here on the YouTube channel so you can get daily exclusive video content and coverage of all things Denver Broncos. Not to mention, this is turned into a podcast on all of your favorite audio podcasting platforms. But Broncos country, hope you guys are doing well here. Today we have 24 hours until the Broncos' first official practice on the field at the UCL Training Center, where all 90 players will be. Quarterbacks, rookies, they've already been on the practice field getting acclimated, getting things going, but everything is full speed ahead. And we're going to go through our three bold predictions for training camp, for Broncos camp here in this upcoming month and a half. It's going to be madness as we see three preseason games. We see the roster go from 90 all the way to 53 in the span of just three weeks. There is going to be a lot, and you're going to get all that coverage and content here. Lockdown Broncos. So diving into things first. The first projection that I have, and we're going to share some Broncos fans' responses a little bit later on as the show progresses, but my first bold projection for the Broncos camp is going to be that Drew Locke is going to be very sharp. He's going to look good. He's going to have good practices, and I think he's going to perform well in the NFL preseason. Now, I look at uh, the the accumulation of data that is going on right now. There's some clarity regarding the Aaron Rodgers situation that came out in the last 24 hours that maybe impacts this a little bit. Nothing too much for what the Broncos, I think, plan to do in the least in 2021. I think it's after 2021, we're going to focus on that. But I think that Drew has been very focused this offseason. He's been putting in a lot of work. He's been working on some mechanical changes from his footwork to his stance to pre-snap and just going through the process of learning how to be a mental processor in the NFL. And he has the physical talent to be successful in the NFL. The question is, can you combine the mental process with it, the ever-adapting changes of what you see NFL defenses throw at you, and can you overcome some of those areas in your game that are weaknesses that you have struggled with? And I think that's where Drew is at right now. I think we're going to see him take a step here in Broncos camp. And then the preseason, I think he's going to win the starting job for 2021. What he chooses to do with that week one all the way through week 18, that's going to be up to him. And we'll analyze that and process it as the weeks come and go here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. But that is my first bold prediction. There are a lot of people out there that don't think he's going to win the starting job, and rightfully so. I understand that. I understand the different side of things. You look at Teddy Bridgewater. You look at what he's been able to bring to the table as a veteran guy throughout his career. He's not a guy that's going to come in and he's going to harm the chemistry of your offense. He'll manage the game really well for you, but you needed to be more aggressive. Will we see Teddy Bridgewater do that in training camp and preseason? I expect we're going to see him take some chances, but I think at the end of the day, the Broncos might be better off suited at least in 2021, going with Drew Locke. So my first bold prediction for Broncos camp is Drew will run away with it and have a sharp camp. The second one will be that Calvin Anderson wins the starting job at right tackle. Now, I called into Logan and Lewis on KOA 850, talking with Dave Logan, Rick Lewis, a little bit about how they see the right tackle competition shaking out in training camp. And Dave Logan thinks that Bobby Massey will be the evident guy there, obviously with his experience, being a veteran presence on the offensive line, his history, He can pick things up really quickly. He thinks that Bobby Massey will be the Broncos' right tackle. I think that Calvin Anderson will. And Rick Lewis, in our interview when I called in, had said something along the lines that he did mention that Garrett Bowles posted something on his social media feed about, hey, don't sleep on Calvin Anderson. And if you've heard that saying before, you've heard it here on Lockdown Broncos, we've had Calvin on the show. I think that with where Calvin is at in terms of developmental status under Mike Munchak, I think he'll be in a good position to help lead on that offensive line to help pick things up because I do think that he can offer a little bit more as both a run blocker and a pass protector than any of those other options can. Now, I'm certainly able to be proven wrong here. Training camp, different schemes. Bobby Massey has a lot to learn. Cam Fleming, I think, is just a veteran guy. He's a jag, just a guy. I don't think he's going to make it 
out of the Broncos active roster here in 2021. I think it's going to boil down to Massey and Calvin Anderson. But I think that Calvin's going to win that job, and the Broncos do have a veteran guy behind him in Massey, in which if that were the case, I think the Broncos would roll with, and I think that's how it's going to play out there. My third and final bold prediction here, I think P.J. Locke will run away with it in camp as the backup safety to Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson. He'll be safety number three as Jamar Johnson, as Caden Stearns continue to get a little bit more acclimated with the Broncos' playbook, which there's nothing wrong with that. And as we heard in our interview with P.J. Locke a couple weeks ago here on Lockdown Broncos, he said, when I first came into the Broncos, when I came to Vic Fangio's defense, when I looked at the playbook, there's a lot of terminology. It's very difficult to learn. So I think that for guys like Jamar Johnson, Caden Stearns, they're going to be behind guys like P.J. and Trey Marshall as the ongoing competition uh, is going to be there for the Broncos at camp. Beginning tomorrow and all throughout preseason and training camp, that's an area when we watch preseason games against the Vikings, the Seahawks, and the Rams, I hope Broncos fans keep an eye on. Keep an eye on who does well behind the Broncos starters at the safety position. I do think P.J. Locke, with his experience being in the system, being in Vic's locker room for the past two seasons, he came in late in 2019. He was on the practice squad. He was in the meeting room every day. He was on the roster last year in 2020, was promoted to the active roster. Week one, stayed on the active roster through a good portion of the season, contributed on special teams. There's value in him being on this roster. Now, he can work his way into that rotation. I think that he's probably the one player. And I think that Trey Marshall's in the same conversation too. I think between those two players, you will see them playing for that backup role behind Justin and Kareem here in 2021. And that will line up my top three bold predictions for Broncos camp here just ahead of the start of the 2021 NFL season. Coming up here in just a moment, we're going to hear some Broncos fans' responses to the same exact question. We have some that were expected, and we have some unexpected responses as well. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, I have to tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. That's our good friends over there, betonline.ag. And BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. The NFL season is fast approaching and you don't want to miss out on everything that Bet Online offers. You get all the latest news, odds, and sporting info for all the sports, including the NFL, NHL, MLB, NBA, and all of your UFC and MMA action in one place that is Bet Online. You don't have to sit on the sidelines anymore as the NFL season is starting up this week with training camp and most teams reporting for practice. The NFL preseason is just in a couple weeks away and BetOnline has you covered. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. And when you do, use promo code LOCKEDON and you'll get your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit today over there. BetOnline.ag. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. And as we continue to dive deeper in today's episode of the show, three bold predictions for Broncos camp. I shared mine with the avid listeners all across Broncos country, but I wanted to hear from Broncos country as to what their bold projections were for the Broncos this upcoming season, what we will see from them in training camp and the NFL preseason. We're going to start things off with Alec Hirsink. He says, another quarterback is brought in. Javante Williams takes running back one and Patrick Sertan starts over Ronald Darby. Now I'll touch on your first one here. I don't believe that the Broncos will be bringing in any quarterback at this point in time throughout the offseason. It's unlikely right now that Aaron Rodgers will be traded by the Green Bay Packers. We have some more information on that we'll provide at the end of today's show. Uh, and outside of that, I can't see anybody else being brought in to compete with the Broncos quarterbacks that are already there with Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. Unless it was one of those big names, it's going to be Drew and Teddy all the way here in 2021. In terms of Javante taking over as running back one, I don't foresee that necessarily happening in the preseason or also in training camp unless Melvin Gordon were to get injured. And the hope is that nobody gets hurt in training camp. This is something we see all across the NFL every single year. Hopefully it's not the Broncos that get snake bit this year. Last year, they suffered a few injuries in training camp. Obviously, Justin Sternid missed the entire 2020 season due to a wrist injury. The hope is that the Broncos can make it through training camp and preseason relatively healthy before the start of the regular season where everything really does matter. But getting there, you have to go through a little bit of hell in order to get to the side where the process will already be in place come week one when you prepare for the New York Giants. So um, there's that. Patrick Sertan starts over. I, mean, I don't necessarily know if that's a bold prediction, but I do like it. I think that Pat Sertan will be the Broncos' number one cornerback option this upcoming season, regardless of maybe how it's positioned on the depth chart. Because the Broncos, once the first preseason game rolls around the week of, they will release their first unofficial depth chart and we'll break it down here on the show but Alec thank you so much for your comments and your insights KJ's underscore graphics says Patrick Sertan plays his way to cornerback one I like that lock out plays Teddy we predicted that and it appears that you're thinking the same here and number three Denver trades Teddy Bridgewater in a package for Aaron Rodgers well I mean at this point in time as it stands today when this podcast episode is being released it does not appear that that is going to be the case here for the Broncos 
in 2021. We'll touch on that a little bit later on. But KJ, thank you for your tweet, my friend, and your insight. I appreciate it. Peter underscore Nova says, number one, Massey looks better than expected. Bobby Massey, we were just talking about him. Number two, Michael Ojemudi is getting 50% of his snaps at safety. That will be a really interesting one, in my opinion, because of Michael's role already. We know he's going to play a little bit of that nickel. He's going to play some outside cornerback in practice for the Broncos throughout training camp, but he has to know a little bit about the rotations, being able to drop to that deep middle. That's simple in a sense because he's played safety before. So I don't think that even if the Broncos – place him there. I don't think it's going to impact him too much. Now, I don't think that he'll be that backup safety option, at least not in 2021. I think he'll play a role in that rotation in the secondary, but I think that right now in 2021, I think PJ Locke, Trey Marshall, they're vying for that backup spot behind both Kareem and also Justin Simmons. So we'll see how that plays out. But yes, you will see Michael Ojemudia in some role in some facet at the safety position in a rotational set. Outside of that, he says Lloyd Cushenberry will look like he'll take the next step forward and is the clear-cut starter. I am in agreement with you here on this one, Peter. I don't believe that Quinn Miners is going to come in right away and push Lloyd Cushenberry to be the starter. Yes, there will be competition. And I think for Cush, playing against Division I athletes throughout his entire collegiate career gives him a benefit that Quinn Miners simply doesn't possess just yet. Yes, Miners look great against some D1 prospects in the Senior Bowl, but that's not a whole lot. The NFL, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot faster, and I don't know if Miners will be up to speed on the Broncos' offensive playbook just yet. But then again, I'm not trying to say that he can't. I just want to throw caution to the wind where Lloyd Cushenberry is at as a second-year player in comparison to a guy who's playing Division Three football at Wisconsin-Whitewater. I think that Miners does have a chip on his shoulder. He's a guy that can come in. He's a guy that can blend in with what Mike Munchak wants to do philosophically and also in terms of a blocking scheme. But let's also not forget, he has never played center in the facet that Lloyd Cushingberry has. I think that's where Cushingberry has the advantage. So maybe some areas right now, maybe Miners might be more stronger in the upper body. This is something we don't know yet, but we're going to see a lot of when the Broncos mix and match different offensive personnel, the first team O, the second team O, and the third team O together. We're going to see a blend rotation of a lot of these players in at the center position specifically. So we're looking forward to seeing what both Lloyd Cushingberry and Quinn Miners can offer the Broncos here this upcoming season. Peter, Thank you for your tweets, my friend. Cody9984 says, Quinn takes Cush's job. I touched on it a little bit. I'm not necessarily sure that's going to be the case, but that is bold. Number two, Tim Patrick makes it tough for KJ Hamler to see the field. Now, I do want to address this one. I think that'll be very tough. I don't think that Tim Patrick seeing the field is going to take KJ Hamler off the field. I think that what the Broncos plan to do, and you may see this, and I want us to revisit this conversation once the NFL regular season begins, I think that regardless of how many wide receivers the Broncos have on the roster, they're not going to take reps or different opportunities away from one player. I think it's all about how you utilize guys to their strengths. Now, for example, if the Broncos are playing a team that maybe has smaller cornerbacks, I think that's where you really go with guys like Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick. And if you have guys that you're going against maybe in the slot, if the Broncos get a matchup inside the slot against a really slow-footed guy that the Broncos believe they can exploit a matchup there, then I think that's where you see K.J. Handler slide into the slot a little bit. Or if you can get a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against a slower guy and K.J. can get that release off the line of scrimmage, I think you take advantage of that. You don't have to be handcuffed as an organization by saying, okay, hey, look, we can only play this amount of guys, so this guy's not going to get reps on the field. That's not how it's going to work. The Broncos, under Coach Zach Azani, they have rotated in multiple wide receivers, not just Cortland, not just Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler. They're going to rotate guys in like maybe Seth Williams at times and also Tyree Cleveland, maybe even Deontay Spencer. You might see him sprinkled in, but the Broncos aren't limited as to who they can rotate. And I don't think that's going to be the case here in 2021, but I do appreciate your insight there, Cody. And then he says, number three, the offensive side doesn't look great in camp. Well, I'd hope that might be expected a little bit considering that the first-team offense will be going against a very good-looking first-team defense on paper. Now, Patrick Coyote and I, we touched on this a little bit in yesterday's episode, Locked on Broncos, but I don't necessarily believe that would be a bad thing because far too often we're going to see overreaction, the first practice, the first interception. I mean, hell, we already got that during mandatory minicamp. If Drew Locke threw an interception, the world was set on fire. If Teddy Bridgewater threw an interception, everybody was hitting the panic button. So I don't necessarily believe that we should read too much into the narratives if the Broncos offense struggles a little bit in practice. However, let's shift our focus to the first joint training camp practice that the Broncos will have against the Minnesota Vikings. They're returning a lot of guys back on that defensive line. George Payton has helped assemble that Vikings roster that is very young for the most part, but they're also getting guys back that are healthy. You're going to go against Patrick Peterson. You're going to go against Mackenzie Alexander in practice, Harrison Smith on that back end. 
that is going to be a really good test, I think, for the Broncos offense when it comes to preseason practice, training camp practices. I think that's what we need to really evaluate. But don't evaluate too much into what's happening in the day-to-day when the first-team Broncos offense goes against the the first-team Broncos defense and the defense dominates. That will happen, I think, on days. And you're also going to see days where the Broncos offense might dominate the Broncos defense. There is no point of overreacting. You have to get into the analysis piece based on what the players did, what the players did on the defensive side of the ball if a good play was made, what the offensive players did if a great play was made on their half. And then after that, when you look at these joint training camp practices, you look at that first preseason game and the second one, you look at how they did against other competition. I'm telling you this. being If you've ever played the game of football, you practice against your own teammates, you know what plays are coming, you pick up on tendencies, and defenses, specifically in Vic's defense, when you got guys like Justin Simmons on that back end, who's one of the smartest players in football, and you know based on certain personnel formations and different splits what plays are coming, that becomes a little bit of an issue because the defense, they already know. And sometimes you're going to walk a play back, and it's easy to know what play is coming there. Specific tags. Now, when you play another team, they don't pick up on your tendencies as quick as your own team does. So don't invest too much in what happens to the Broncos internally with both the offense and the defense in training camp. That joint training camp practice, like I said, with Minnesota is going to be very crucial Then we can get into the nuts and bolts about maybe how they're performing because it's not against their own guys. They're going to be going against other guys. They're going to knock the snot out of each other. You're going to have that competition there. I love that. You don't necessarily get a great evaluation factor when you look at your own team, when you go against your own team. So something to keep an eye on there if you are a Broncos fan that is looking at every tweet that goes out during training camp. But Broncos country, coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about some news regarding Deshaun Watson, his latest status in the NFL, Are the Broncos interested or would they be interested if he were in fact available? Something's changed on that front, not to mention what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. It's relevant information to the Broncos. I promise I'm not going to be throwing out these hypotheticals. I'm just going to talk about what's been reported so far. We're going to break that down coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, I have to tell you about the other sponsor of today's episode of the show. That's our good friends over there, rockauto.com. And I go to rockauto.com. If you need anything for your car, rockauto.com has everything for your truck or your car today. And you can go to rockauto.com rockauto.com to save money on parts that your local chain auto parts stores may not carry. The thing I love about rockauto.com the most is that they deliver whatever I need directly to my doorstep. I don't have to go through the hassle of waiting for a warehouse to send the part to the local chain auto store when I can get it delivered directly to my door. I get everything that I need. Several things that I've bought so far, I've bought new floor mats for my vehicle. I bought a new steering wheel cover because the Colorado heat absolutely destroys the inside when you have black leather seats. And I want you to take advantage of everything today by going to rockauto.com where you can see a catalog that has everything for your vehicle, for your car or truck based on year, make, model. You can choose the brand, specifications, and even the prices that you prefer. So go to rockauto.com right now to see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write Lockdown Broncos in there. How did you hear about his box? So that they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts that your car will ever need. rockauto.com And as we jump into the fourth quarter action of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, you get this show every single day in both video and audio format. Lockdown Broncos on your favorite audio podcasting platform. Make sure you subscribe so you can take us with you every single morning when you're on your commute to work. But throughout the season, all year long, Lockdown Broncos is here for you for your daily coverage of the team that you root for on Sundays. Let's continue to build this community in a very strong form. I appreciate your engagement and your interaction. But let's get to some Broncos news and notes here as it pertains to maybe some other quarterbacks in the NFL because their names consistently get brought up and they get linked to the Denver Broncos. But first off, it was reported on Monday by NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport that the Houston Texans were now listening to offers from teams. And they've been listening to offers for quite some time now. But in the reality of the Denver Broncos and how it may apply, the Broncos, as reported by Benjamin Albright of KOA, Broncos Insider, the Broncos aren't interested in trading for Deshaun Watson unless his legal issues were to be resolved. So as it stands right now, the legal issues for Watson are still ongoing. There is an investigation, and there could be charges coming down the pike for him in the next couple of weeks. We don't know yet, as the NFL, they are still in their investigative phase with Watson specifically. So if that were to happen... At that point, if there was a charge, if there was any kind of criminal charge whatsoever regarding Watson, 
He would be placed on the commissioner's exempt list and would not be eligible to play in 2021 until cleared or until the legal process is over. As of right now, there is no timetable for when that may happen. So Watson to the Broncos is not an option, not to mention the optics, the message that I think that Broncos fans should take into consideration. There are some evident character concerns when it comes to the situation with Deshaun Watson, yet we see in the comment section all the time that the Broncos should trade for him. I'm not on the boat of saying that because I don't support the behavior that is out there. Now, whether it is true, whether it is untrue, remains to be seen. I think the message still stands for the Broncos with where they're at right now. You do not take this risk. You do not go out and you don't give up assets for a player that may not be available to play, not to mention with some of the internal concerns about character. And that is all I'll leave with that. Now let's switch gears to the Green Bay Packers quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. I was listening to Logan and Lewis and Benjamin Albright had hopped on there right after Tom Pelissero, Ian Rappaport had put out there that Green Bay had talked to Aaron Rodgers and that people close to Aaron Rodgers had said that he is planning on playing for the Packers this upcoming season. And this was a subject that came up early on Monday that Aaron Rodgers had told people close to him that he plans on playing in 2021 for the Packers. However, Benjamin Albright provided a little bit more clarification on the subject, later confirmed by Adam Schefter of ESPN that the Packers and Rodgers camp, they came together and they agreed on a little bit of a terminology inside his contract that would make it to where he does not skip training camp. He reports he plays in 2021, but then after the 2021 season, they will honor his wish and they will trade him to wherever he would like to go. That is being worked out in terms of his contract as we speak, which opens up the floodgates that the Broncos may be in position after 2021 to acquire Aaron Rodgers. Albright has also stated that the Broncos, they would be willing to pay the asking price that the Packers organization would like. Now, more than likely, these new contract terms that are coming up with Rodgers would indicate that there will be a no trade clause, which gives him the power to say, I want to be traded here, and he can accept where he wants to be traded to. As of right now, how his contract currently sits, it would be that the Packers, they could trade Rodgers if they were to ever trade him to any team that they wanted based on the compensation that another team would provide. We know that the Broncos have probably the most cap flexibility right now and the most valuable of assets internally in terms of draft capital to be able to make this move happen but it wouldn't happen right now in 2021 it would more than likely happen after this upcoming season so there's a lot of questions that remain do the broncos wait until after 2021 and then if he is available do they still invest in maybe trading for him i think a lot of it depends on how drew lock or teddy bridgewater plays here in 2021 the broncos have to stay the course right now with one of these two quarterbacks to be able to wait and see not to mention, it covers all the bases for general manager George Payton. When it comes to Drew Locke, he really wanted to see if this was the year that Drew could take the next step and exemplify the growth that maybe Josh Allen had, where he can have a strong season to give the Broncos more strong consideration to say, okay, look, we're going to invest in Drew Locke. We're going to go forward with him. This is his audition year. Now for Drew, he has to win it in training camp. He has to win it in the NFL preseason. And if he has a really good regular season, if he is the starting quarterback, I think it makes the question a little bit bigger for the Broncos. Do they trade for Rodgers? I still think that they do, but I think that you have the conversation internally with Drew Locke as to would you be willing to sit for one or two years and learn behind Rodgers, who still has, in my opinion, three to five years of good football left to play? Do the Broncos take that risk because Drew Locke, he isn't getting any younger. He's continuing to advance on his contract. Would Drew be willing to do that? Very unlikely at this point because everything is just speculation. But for the Broncos, it gives them a little bit of an insight as to maybe a potential runway if they were to make a push for Rodgers. And he is intent on going to Denver, according to Trey Wingo. I think that the writing on the wall signifies that the Broncos and Rodgers are more likely in 2022 than it is in 2021. And if, in fact, Drew Locke doesn't pan out for the Broncos in 2021, it goes through the process where George Payton said, hey, look, we looked at every option. We gave him the chance. Now we can move on to our next plan at quarterback. And it still adds a little bit of a long-term issue that one listener on Twitter had actually brought up to me that even if Rodgers signs with the Broncos and you have maybe three to four years with Rodgers at the quarterback position, what do the Broncos do after Rodgers retires? Will they have a better contingency plan in place? I think a lot of it depends on how the Broncos do, but there's so many questions right now. There's so much ambiguity, Broncos country, and we've been on a wild ride this entire offseason. When more information comes about, and if the Broncos do make a move, We'll have you covered here on Lockdown Broncos. But that will conclude today's episode of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is Broncos camp. Players back on the field. The first official practice begins at the UCL Training Center. Fans will be there. We'll have complete coverage on tomorrow's episode. Lockdown Broncos here on your favorite audio podcasting platform and on YouTube. So make sure you smash that subscribe button, like the video, and also comment and interact with me as we continue to grow things here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast.